Hey, M bitches, it's a bitch boy party. It's a bitch boy party. Oh my God, I wish this was vodka. I'd be so happy. <laughs> Just soda fucking water. But guess what? I'm high on life. I don't need alcohol to have fun. <laughs> How are my bitches? So excited for tonight. This is like one of my favorite things to talk about because bitch boards, vision boards, vibration boards, whatever you want to call it, has helped me immensely, immensely in my business, in my dreams, in my goals, and my aspirations. Um, people are texting me that they can't get on the thingamajig. Hold on one, one second. This is what I, thank God I'm so technical. Thank God I'm so technical. Um, how has everybody been enjoying these calls? Inquiring minds want to know. Let me just copy this and send it to my girl. Okay. See if that works. How has everybody been enjoying the call? The calls over the last couple of weeks. I have loved them. I think it's so fun. I love seeing my girls from all over the world. And it's just been so rewarding. So thank you guys for taking time out of your busy life to be here because my mission and my purpose here on earth is to have as many people as I possibly can, especially women, totally change their lives because no one on this earth should not be a bad bitch. We should all be, no, we shouldn't be sad bitches, not bad bitches. We gotta be bad bitches. We can't be sad bitches. This is what happens when I'm trying to text, let people in, read, and make sure one of my titties doesn't fall out of the bottom of my sports bra. That's a little bit old. <laughs> yeah, we put on this old sports bra and you know, like at any moment that one of your titties is just gonna fall out the bottom like a basset hound's ears. Mm -hmm. hold on Kim wants Kim Fox is like please make me administrator Kim how do I do that I don't even fucking know God help me hold on participants Kim Fox I don't know Kim don't worry about it you know I don't need to make you administrator I can do it I'm a fuck I'm superwoman <laughs> oh my god all right so let's get into this this is big <clears throat> we're obviously the new year is this weekend coming up I don't give a fuck if it's January 1st. I don't give a fuck if it's August 1st. There's always the right time to change your life is now. It's now, okay? And my biggest thing is everyone gets so juicy and wet and horny for this time of year. You're like, oh, new year, new me. I'm just here to tell you that if you bring the same shit from 2022 into your new year, you're gonna just be the same tired, broke ass hoe that you were before. Okay. Let's just throw that out first. So when you do this work, it has to be super intentional and you have to also really think about the last year. So let's kind of like reflect a little bit before we get into this. Let's reflect on the last year of your life. Like how has it been? What are the things that served you? And that made you feel really good. And what are the things that you're like, hell to the fucking no, I'm not doing this anymore. It does not serve me. It doesn't serve my highest, greatest good. It's not helping me re reach my goals, dreams, and aspirations. You know, we talk a lot about in ambitious. We talk a lot about core desired feelings. And if you guys really know me, you guys know that my number one core desired feeling is freedom. And there's a lot of things in the new year that I will not be bringing into the new year because it doesn't help me feel free. It makes me feel like I'm in a cage, it makes me feel like I'm in, in a prison. It makes me feel just like really like tight, not expansive. So those things I'll just be getting rid of. And people go, oh, it's that easy. Yes, it's that easy. You know, just say no. Remember the whole 80s campaign, just say no to drugs. Just say no to shit that's not serving your highest, greatest good. Okay. So <clears throat> we've talked about the hell yes and hell no list. All of the things that I've been teaching you over the last couple of weeks has been lubricating you to get to the place where we're going into right now, which is creating your bitch board. 
Now I do now, I create my bitch board in a very specific manner. I love when everyone's juicy and wet. Makes me so ha makes me my um, job a lot easier. If you know what I mean, I don't really have a good gag reflex. If you know what I'm saying, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> I knew the eggplant emoji was coming. All right. So the way that I used to do my vision boards and the way that I do my bitch boards now are totally different. Um, so I did bring some vision boards. I did bring some vision boards from my past. You guys can kind of see a little bit. Maybe I should bring it over here. Um, I talk a lot about um, when I put, this is like a story that some of you guys know, but in 2012 or 2013, I had just did my vision board and I put Dr. Oz on my vision board. And literally two weeks later, Dr. Oz's people called and they're like, we want you on the Dr. Oz show. Okay. So I was like, damn, that, that was expedited quickly. And it was funny because I did the Dr. Oz show and it was just, I was, cause I, at the time, like, I just like, liked Dr. Oz was like kind of new. Um, he was just coming up the ranks with Oprah and I was like, damn, I think this vision board shit works. Now, mind you, I've had a vision board for a really long time, but this was like one specific story I love to talk about. So I went into the Dr. Oz show. And at the time I was the official coach for Miss USA and Miss Universe and Miss America. And I was coaching a girl who was Miss DC that year. Her name was Mackenzie. And she called me and I was actually at dinner with a bunch of my friends and my stepdaughter, Karina, and my husband, Matt. And we were kind of just like celebrating me being on Dr. Oz. And my girl, Mercy, um, Mercy, Mackenzie, sorry, Mercy. I just looked at your name when I was saying Mackenzie, my girl, Mackenzie, she texted me and she was like, like, girl, have you seen like own magazine? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't like really get magazines or whatever. And literally we were just talking as Mackenzie texted me, Karina, my stepdaughter was like, well, if you put Dr. Oz on your vision board, you might as well put Oprah on your vision board. And I was like, touche, I'm going to put Oprah on that vision board as soon as I get home. And then Mackenzie had texted me literally five minutes after I was talking to Karina at dinner about this. And she's like, do you get own magazine? And I was like, no, I was like, why? She goes, well, Oprah just quoted you in her magazine and own. And I didn't even put Oprah on my vision board yet. All we had to do was speak and say, wouldn't it be cool to put Oprah on your vision board? And I was in such alignment. I was in such a, a congruent vibrational frequency that literally it happened like that. And so Oprah quoted me, which I thought was so cool. And, you know, years later, I still do vision boards. I think that they're so fun. It's so creative. And what I like to do with my vision board is I like to put it somewhere where I always am looking. So my vision board now is behind my Peloton. So like, as I'm on my Peloton, like doing cardio, my vision board is right there. So like I can look at my Peloton screen, but I also can see my vision board right behind it. So I'm always, always, always like looking at it. And when you're moving because motion creates emotion and all of your neurology is firing together and wiring together as you're exercising, right? You're thinking about creation. You're thinking about your goals. You're thinking about your dreams and your big aspirations. And it's just so perfect to have it right there. Some of you guys work a lot at a desk, put your vision board behind, you know, where you can see it while you're like at your desk. Or, you know, if you are in your kitchen a lot, or if you like, I don't know where, like it may be feasible for you to put it there, but for me, I love it behind my Peloton and I love it like where I work. Okay. You can also take pictures of your vision board and always put it on your phone. So every time you open your phone, your bitch board is right there staring at you in the face and you can't run from it. It's always there. So your dreams, your goals, your aspirations are always right there. Now, when I did vision boards a long time ago, Kim says, mine is in my bathroom. Um, you mean, sometimes when you're sitting, it, it takes time, you know, it takes time in there sometimes, right? Um, 
The way that I used to do my vision board years ago is not how I do my vision board now. And I'm going to teach you how I do it now, because to me, it's just much more effective. Okay. So what I want you to do is don't freak out. Cause a lot of people were like, Oh shit, I don't have my vision board stuff, or I don't have all the things that I want to cut out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I feel like your bitch board is a constant evolving thing. So as you go into this new year, different things are going to come up to you different dreams, different goals, different aspirations, different little frivolous, fun things that maybe you want to experience or achieve. And I don't want you to be like, oh, I made my vision board and this is like the word of God. No, it can change and evolve. And there's things on my vision board that years ago I thought were so important. Like if you guys can see on my vision board, sorry, I've been talking all day. So my throat is a little crazy. So excuse me, but if you look at my vision board, like I have Louis Vuitton, I have Chanel. I have cars and shit like that. So like that stuff's cool. But now I don't give a fuck about stuff like that. You know, um, like Oprah says, if it's on your ass, it's not an asset. You know, I'd rather put my money in the S&P 500 stock account or put it back into my business or something that's actually going to like give me an experience and not like a, some kind of frivolous thing. But if you're super into three dimensional shit and you like that kind of stuff, like that's cool. I am not talking shit. I'm not faulting you. Those things just don't matter to me anymore. And maybe because I've had all of that crap and it's like, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really make you happier, in my opinion. And people will be like, well, that's nice to say of you because you've already had all these things. Yeah, I've had them. And then guess what? I sold half the shit that I owned because it was like just taking up space in my closet. It wasn't really bringing me um, anything really in return. I'm more of an experienced person. And like I've always said, my goal and my mission here on earth and like why I'm here is to help women go from being a sad bitch to being bad bitches. That's like my whole thing. That's why I'm here on this earth. That's what I live for. So for me, my vision board in the new year always reflects like how many people I'm going to help, how I'm going to change people's lives how I'm going to bring my messaging to a mass audience where I can help as many women across the globe as I can. And that's what I am working towards this year is expanding the brand, making, working with me less money so that more people can do it because I already have wealth and abundance. I'm not really seeking more of that. For me, my new goals in life is really about reaching as many women as I can. And I'm going to, and that's my whole, that's it. So you're not going to see a lot of Louis Vuitton and Chanel on my vision board. You're not going to see fancy cars. It's really going to be about impacting as many women as I can. And I hope that each and every one of you guys will help me do that by spreading the word about ambitious, ambitious movement and what we do here. Cause I think, you know, it's, it's just so fun. And people always say like, I desire community. It's like one of my goals. I desire community. I desire sisterhood. Well, what you desire, you have to give, right? What you desire, you have to give. So if you desire sisterhood, be a sister. You desire community, provide community, right? And it's the same thing with me. It's like, if I'm saying on my vision board this year, I desire to help awaken as many women on this planet as I can, I need to think global. I need to think even bigger than I've ever thought. And we're doing that. And I can't wait for you all to see what's coming down the pretty pink pipeline. It's going to be amazing. So this was a, a old vision board that I started creating in 2021 and I ended up scrapping it. But I want to show you how I set my vision boards or my bitch boards up. So as you guys know, in Ambitious the Book, if you haven't got it, I don't know what the fuck are you waiting for? Get your shit together. Um, but what we talk about is the six life makers and breakers, right? So I always say there's these six things that keep you from greatness if you do not adopt the tools that it takes to fix the things that are going on in your life. Now, am I sitting here saying everyone's broken, everyone's fucked up and everyone needs to heal? No, that's not what I'm saying. I actually think that if we all all walk around in life thinking that we're broken and fucked up all the time and that we have to heal and heal and heal and heal. And our only, only reason for being alive on earth is to heal. That's bullshit. And anybody that you listen to who says that your purpose is to heal, run far away from them because they are snake oil salesmen and they are fucking charlatans. 
Yes. Are there things that have happened to you in this life that you need to heal? Absolutely. Are there things, if you believe in this from past lives and ancestral epigenetic lineage that has been passed down through your DNA that you're carrying for your ancestors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But we also need to have fun. Okay. We need to get laid. We need to make money. We need to have fun. Okay. We need to have nice skin and good tits and cute asses. It's not just about fucking healing because your dad used to spank you when you were little. Okay. Yes. Healing is very purposeful. But at the end of the day, I want your vision boards, your bitch boards to reflect who you are and the fun that you desire to have. Okay. So when I talk about the six life makers, what's the first life maker? Spirituality, right? Your divine connection to God, your divine connection to whatever God you worship or believe in. You might not even believe in a God. You might be like, hey, it's just the universe. There was a big bang. Here I am trying to live my best ambitious life. Well, I don't care what you believe, but if you're here, you believe in some way, shape and form that there is some kind of power out there that is all knowing. And that's why we're here. We're not just a bunch of fucking amoebas on like a, in a turtle's dream. Okay. We're here for a reason. So the first thing I talk about is your spirituality. So what I like to do is I like to break up my uh, vision board into three parts on one side three parts on the other side. And then in the middle is like you. So I had on my last vision board, I had like a, not, this is actually not my last vision board. This is an older vision board, but I had like this picture of the earth here and it says, focus on the big picture. So that was kind of like my messaging for the new year, right? Like I want to focus on the big picture. I don't want to get caught up in the minutia of bullshit. I want to focus on the big picture. Okay. So that's my circle in the middle. You could put whatever you want there. Maybe you have a word, a word for 2000. Yeah. Kim says, I always put a picture of my family and I in the middle. That's awesome. Right. Or maybe you don't have a family. Maybe you're a single lady and you desire to find the love of your life and you want two children and a golden retriever. Then find a picture of this really great family with two cute kids, a hot husband with a big schlong. And I don't give a fuck. Take a picture of yourself, cut your face out and smack it on there on top of that, on top of the girl's face. But I know I said on my last, um, on my last video, I think from last week, I was talking about how maybe I didn't say this. I might've been smoking the crack pipe, but I talk about this often because people come to me a lot with vision board questions and bitch board questions. And I say, whatever you put on your vision board has to be in resonance energetically with your deepest desires, goals, dreams, and aspirations. It can't be someone else's life because it will come true. Everyone here is very powerful. What you think, what you say, and what you do in action becomes your reality. So I had a girl years ago who she was a single gal and she was like, I want to meet the man of my dreams. I want, I want two children and I, and, um, I want a house in the countryside and whatever the fuck. And she took a picture of this cute little family and she had a big golden retriever in the picture. And I was like, girl, you don't like dogs. And she's like, oh, I know, but it's such a cute picture. And the dog is like in the picture and I can't really cut the dog out. Because if I cut the dog out, it'll look like the kids have no legs. And I was like, I don't know. I don't like this picture. I really think you could find a better picture, bitch. And she's like, no, I really like this picture. Well, guess what? That bitch met a guy with two kids from a previous marriage, baby mama drama. And guess what else he had? An arthritic, slobbering, piss on everything, golden retriever. And I was like, oh, isn't that, isn't that weird? Isn't that strange? And she was like, fuck you, Katie. And I was like, ah, bitch, I told you I wasn't speaking curses over you, but I was saying like, watch yourself, check yourself before you fucking riggedy wreck yourself. Right. So be very specific with what you put on your vision board guys and don't live someone else's dream just because you see it on social media or your next door neighbors have it, or your mom thinks that you should have it does not mean that deep down inside of you, that that's the life that you should be living or desiring right? And have you noticed that I never say the word want? It's always desire. 
It's always desire because the word desire in Latin is D-E is of the father, meaning anything that you desire is from heaven, is from a higher power. When you say the words I want or I need, you're saying to the universe, I, do, I have lack, I'm not enough, there's not enough, it's everything is scarce, there's not enough to go around. So watch your, watch your language too when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the vision board. Spiritual connection, divine connection, spirituality. What, is, what do you desire for your life in the next year? What is your spiritual connection going to look like? Okay, so let's talk about that. I want to hear from you guys what you desire from your spiritual life. Do you want to go back to church? Do you want to meditate? Is your like goal is I desire to meditate twice a day, 20 minutes a day? Or uh, my meditation is hiking in the woods every day. Or maybe your, your spiritual practice is walking and having no phone and no earbuds in and you're just listening to nature, you know? What is this, right? Oh, Jess is saying, this is my church. Yes, queen. Yes, Jesus. I'm here for it. I, I love this stuff too. It like lights my fire. So- one of the things that I've been practicing for the last 20 years is I do transcendental meditation. I meditate every day. I go, I go, first I do breath work, then I do cold exposure, and then I meditate. That's every day, okay? Maybe you have a hot tub and you're like, oh, when I go in the hot tub, man, like I see Jesus. I don't know what that, I don't know what it is for you, but every person in the world has to have some kind of divine connection. So for me in the morning, it's doing my morning rituals, which I call the ambituals, right? It's blessing myself. It's calling in my spirit guides. It's calling in my power posse. It's doing my ambitious abundance affirmation, right? It's meditation every day. It's having my nighttime rituals, sound healing, where I'm connecting at night to source energy. Okay, I love this. I'm reading saying, my desire is to go back to temple at least once a month with my family and meditate daily. Love that. Love that. Jen saying meditation, return to church in person consistently, Bible study with other women. So important. So, so, so important. Love that for you. Teresa saying more self-reiki and tapping into forest bathing. Yes. If you want to get into more forest bathing stuff, one of the educators on Ambitious Academy, who's also my shaman, Kaylin Rain, talks a lot about Shin Rin Yoku, which is forest bathing and just communing with nature. I think there's nothing, in my opinion, better than that, you know? Um, Celine seeing spending time in nature, even in the winter, absolutely. Meditating, seeing the sunrise and sunset with no screen and breath work. I love that. I taught you guys some breath work a couple of weeks ago. I hope that you guys are still using it. It's been helping me in amazingly. I've always done breath work um, my whole life, but I really getting into some more serious hardcore breath work and it's just been opening me up. So I'm glad that you guys are doing that. Um, just to say more sacred Saturdays or more sacred Sundays. I love that. And, you know, to me, and I talk to you guys about this in a bitches Academy. I talked to you guys about this in um, all my events and an H2AP, I take Sundays totally off. I do a digital detox. You cannot call me. You cannot get in touch with me. Um, I don't go on apps. I don't do that because I, I, I'm going to use the N word. I need to have time where I am in my sovereign, sovereign, autonomous, I can't even speak English, sovereign, autonomous energy where I am in control and I'm not letting Facebook and Instagram and all this crap because not that I do do that in the first place, but you know, just like people think you should be answering fucking emails every minute of the day, all day long. No, absolutely not. And that's, you know, Jess is doing the sacred Saturdays and sacred Sundays. I love that. Kelly's saying incorporating more nighttime rituals in addition to AM rituals. I love that Kelly, because we're so hell bent on like making the morning great. And then as the day goes on, it's just like, wah, wah. so it's important to have the nighttime rituals. I love to take a bath at night. I love to do sound healing at night. I always do my ambitious abundance affirmation at night. Um, 
So I love nighttime rituals, supplementation, just little things that make you feel grounded. So important. I love these. I love these guys. I love these. And for the women who have been the OGs of ambitious, and I know I have a lot of um, newbies here that haven't really gone deep into the ambitious lifestyle, please share what you do. Because a lot of you, I know what you do, but I would love to have the contrast of like someone who's been doing this for a really long time and someone who's new, because I think the new people, you know, they desire to have people that are like already paving and blazing the way to be like, oh, look what she's doing. Like, that's dope. So please feel free, even though you're like, well, maybe I don't have anything to really contribute to this conversation because I've been doing this for so long. Please do, because I think it up, it just uplifts the other women here who are just starting out on their ambitious journeys, right? Okay, so the next thing, what's the second? What's the second life maker and breaker? Boundaries, feelings, and emotions. So I have my boundaries down here, but you can put them underneath your spiritual axis on your... Um, on your board, but I have boundaries, feelings, and emotions. How do you, let's talk about it. Let's have the conversation. How do you desire to feel in the new year? Okay. So if I say my greatest desire for my ambitious life in the new year is to feel freedom and I'm doing things that don't make me feel free, who the fuck's fault is it? Is someone holding a gun to my head being like, yeah, bitch, you, you can't be free. You got to do this thing that you've always done. That's no longer serving your highest, greatest good. No, absolutely not. Then why do we do things that don't make us feel good? People come to me all the time. They're just like, my life sucks. Everything sucks. I feel like shit all the time. I'm exhausted. Everybody around me is just sucks my, my fucking life force energy dry. I have no time for myself what? Stop being a victim. Stop playing victim. You're not a victim. You are choosing to do these things. So just like we choose that, we have to choose how we desire to feel. Okay. So let's talk about what's, what's everyone's number one core desired feeling for 2023. Put it in the chat. I want to hear it. I love it. Makes me so, makes me so excited. I got chills. They're multiplying. So Kelly and I had a really great conversation today in our one-on-one. -on -one. So Kelly's is vibrational. So what Kelly's saying is like everything she does has to align and resonate with her highest vibrational frequency that she's bringing to the table. Teresa's is authentic. Love it. Shannon's is peaceful. Christine is connected. So she desires to feel connected. So she's saying connection, but let's kind of um, switch the word. So it's a feeling word. So when I say, what do you want to feel? If you're saying, Christine, connection, I want you to say connected. You desire to feel connected, right? Kayla's saying luxury. I want Kayla to say luxurious. I desire to feel luxurious. So like everything I do, everything I think, how I show up, what I'm doing, it's luxurious, right? Melissa's saying peaceful. Kim is saying balanced, Jess is saying, in the, you know, Jess is saying flow, which is a feeling word. Um, Lori is saying enlightened, Kim is saying disciplined, Jen is saying purposeful. I love these guys. You all know mine is free, freedom. That's my number one. I'm like fucking, I'm like Braveheart. That's who I am. It's how I've always been. Jenny, Jen is saying that's my number two. Love it. So the first thing we have to say is, how do you desire to feel in the new year, right? Yeah, Cal, that's a great thing to say. So this section is a great place to include your core desired feelings, right? So in your on your bitch board, you may put your three, five, six, how many ever words. Those are your feeling words of how you desire to feel in the new year. I talk a lot about core desired feelings in my book. I talk a lot about core desired feelings on the app and, bitch, and Bitches Academy and A28P, all that stuff. But that could be a great place to put your core desired feelings. So every time you look at your core desired feelings, it's in your face. Sometimes I ask people, what are your five core desired feelings? And they're like, um, uh, uh. I'm like, bitch, if you don't know them off the top of your head, no wonder why you're not fucking feeling the way you want to feel. You don't even know what the fuck your feeling words are, dude. 
Selena saying courageous, Charlene saying confident. I love these. So good guys. So, so good. Okay. So that's how you desire to feel, right? From an emotional standpoint, what do you want to feel emotionally? I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't think y'all want to feel like a, a sad, depressed, anxious hoe. <laughs> okay. I don't think anyone here wants to feel like that. So how do you desire to show up emotionally in the new year? I know this is a really hard question, but I, I, I really desire for you to think about this deeply. How do you want your emotions to be in the new year? I would like to feel homeostatic. Yeah, I love this. Teresa saying less angry. Teresa and I had a really great conversation for our one-on-one -on -one coaching today. And um, she's so cute because we were talking about anger and I was telling her how I've been working a lot on my anger and my resentment towards other people. And I, and I think we all do this, right? We, we, we get mad at someone or we have a resentful moment and then we try to like just push it under the rug. And that's not really helping you heal that. I think the best thing to do with resentment and anger is to like let it out. And Teresa's like, you know, I was angry about this thing, but I'm really not angry anymore. And I said, Teresa, uh, I will challenge you to, that's not true. And then we started really unpacking it. And she's like, you know what? I am, I'm still fucking angry. I still feel this way. And I'm like, we really have to get serious with ourselves. And we really have to hold the mirror up to ourselves and be like, I am fucking angry and I am fucking resentful and I am holding shit against people. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not a spiritual person. It doesn't mean you're not a good person. It actually means you're a real human because you're feeling your feelings, right? So I'm reaching saying grounded. I love that. Kim is saying joyful. Um, I was talking about a couple of weeks ago how my husband had a Christmas party for all the little kids at the martial arts studio. And these kids, they're just like picking their fucking noses. They're just scratching their freaking selves. They're dancing. They're just shaking it all do you remember when we all used to be like that? And we didn't give a fuck what people thought about us. Like I could have my whole finger up my nose, like scratching my brain. And I didn't give a shit. I probably ate it too, for all I know. I mean, I was, I was a booger eater, I think when I was little. Don't tell my mom I told you that she would fucking flip out. But it's delicious. Um, but I saw a lot of booger eaters the other day at the martial arts studio. And I was just like laughing because I was like, this is how we all used to be. And then one day something happened to us and it shifted us and we lost that joy. This is, this, this is why I created Bitchapalooza. This is why I'm bringing back classes and events to Katie Boyd's Misfit Club, because I desire to feel joyful again, to have fun. You know, at, at Bitchapalooza, we have this thing that we do is called Bitch Olympics. It's so funny. I bet most of you guys are going to wet yourselves. The shit that I'm going to do, do with you guys, you're going to pee your pants laughing. It's going to literally be like a fourth grade slumber party all over again. I'm so excited. And I know a lot of people are like, I don't want to feel joyful. I want to feel sad and heal shit. That's going to heal you probably more than all the rest of the stuff that I'm going to do with you. But when did we lose this part of us? We got to get that back in the new year, man. That is the linchpin. That is what's missing in so many of our lives. Michelle saying balanced and happy. I, I hate not feeling balanced. I don't think you can ever truly feel 100% perfect homeostatic ba balance, but I think you can, you can try. I really do. Lindsay saying to be open and vulnerable. Yes. Kelly saying centered. Mm -hmm. Celine saying feel with a full cup. Yep. And we just say love a full cup. Who doesn't like a full cup? Melissa saying control my emotions and my mental strength. Right. Because we have control over our thoughts. We have control over the things that we say, the things that we think and how we feel. I believe that depression unless you have a chemical imbalance in your brain. Okay. I'm not talking about like, Oh, I'm feeling sad today, or I'm having a, like about a depression, maybe for a couple of weeks or whatever. I'm talking about like, unless you have a chemical imbalance in your brain, if you do not believe that you can be depressed, you cannot be depressed. You have to believe that there is depression to have depression. You have to believe that there is anxiety to experience anxiety. I always tell people, because I always tell people like, what, what's going on right now? And they're like, I just feel so much anxiety. I just feel, and I'm like, why do you feel anxiety? And they're like, well, I'm starting a new job tomorrow. And I'm really ner nervous about that. And I go, what's the difference between feeling excited and anxious? There's physiologically, biologically, neurologically, there's no difference 
between excitement and anxiety. It's the same hormonal cascade. So what if we just said, I just feel so excited. I don't even know what to do with myself. Wouldn't that just shift the fucking energy? I am sick of us being victims. We can't allow this for ourselves anymore. We just can't. And if we do, it's our own motherfucking faults. We have no one to blame but ourselves, period. Jen say, let's find joy without eating boogers. I mean, it was fun for me while it lasted. But then, you know, my mother would take me to Caldors to get my Lisa Frank stickers and it was really cramping my fucking style. So I had to stop putting my finger in my nose. <laughs> Lindsay saying, I cannot wait. I cannot wait either. Kim saying, I like that. I'm excited. You better be, bitch. Better get your fucking rubber underwear on for this one because it's going to be good. Oh, God. Kim has booger eaters. It's just, they'll grow out of it. They'll grow out of it. Hold on. I got to, I got to just turn my, stick my finger on my nose. All right. The next one is wellness, right? So, first is your spiritual connection. Second is your feelings, boundaries, and emotions. The third one, is your wellness. As you guys know, I started out in the industry as a coach, a nutritionist, and a trainer. So my life was spent four in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, every day of my life, making people do squats and lunges and bicep curls, and then making their meal plans. But that's not just what wellness is. Wellness is not just what you're eating. It's not just what you're doing in the gym. It's what you're consuming in all aspects of your life and what you're not consuming. You know, we have been taught by mainstream media that we have to eat every three hours or we're going to die. When I tell people to fast, when they have different ailments or different problems or depression or anxiety, they look at me like I'm smoking crack. Don't even go there if I tell people to do a dry fast where there's no food and no water. Oh God, call the authorities. But all the things that I teach have helped people. And if anybody here has been helped in H2HP or in a Bitches Academy and has fasted and has, it's changed their lives, I would love for you to talk about it. Just a little brief little synopsis in the chat of how fasting and the way that I teach as far as eating and wellness has helped them. Because I know a lot of people here, I'm looking at names. I know a lot of people here have done some amazing things, absolutely amazing things with changing their wellness routine. So what do you desire for your wellness? Do you desire to have a certain type of body, right? Do you want to look like a Victoria's Secret model? Do you want to be a CrossFit girl? Do you, I don't know what the fuck it is to you. I don't know. You want to ask like a Kardashian, none of my business. Okay. That's on you, but you have to know what you desire to create it. Jen is saying, can't wait to do it again. She did a 28 p so many non-scale victories and I wasn't hungry or suffering. Like I thought I would be right. Cause it's a mindset and what you get from fasting and what you get from eating the way I teach what it does to you. It just gives you so much confidence and so much strength because you're doing such difficult things you never thought you could do. And I think that that's what wellness is really about. It's about pushing the limits of your comfort zone and doing things you never thought was possible. And when you fucking do things that you never thought was possible, and in A28P, we always say, my word is law and my self-worth depends on it. So many of you people are going to make this vision board. And guess what? You're going to give up three days into the new year. But that's not what's going to get you that ambitious life. It's just not. <clears throat> and Marija says, give me that hourglass figure back, girl. Yes. You're, you, I mean, girl, you already have it. So please. But I know you're like me. You always want to get better. <laughs> Kim goes, I'd like their snatch little waist, but I think that requires surgery. Yes, it does. It's called a Brazilian butt lift. They take fat out of your stomach and they put it in your ass. Kelly says, I did a round of A28P in October and it saved me this holiday season mentally and physically when everyone around me was getting sick. 100% boost your immune system through the roof. She has saying A28P definitely gave me confidence, clarity, balance, and focus. I love that. Melissa saying, long story short, A28P healed me and gave me freedom from three times a week IV infusions I was bound to for a year and a half. I love, thank you for that. That makes me, that makes my heart sing. 
Lisa saying fasting is the best thing I've ever done. And A to AP changed my life in all as aspects. Thank you. I'm so happy. Emery just says, still got two more rounds of A to AP back, lost 20 pounds the first month. That's awesome, girl. That's so, I'm so happy. So what is your wellness going to be like? Is it a certain body type? Is it working out five days a week? Is it stretching 30 minutes a day? Is it getting a full split? Like we were talking about, it's like one of my things, I want to be able to do a full split front side, you know, left side, right side and full, like right in the middle. I don't know what it means to you, but you got to put it and you got to name it to claim it. You know, God's not like sitting up there and they're like, oh God, I wonder if, what Kelly needs today in her wellness section of her vision board. No, he don't care. God ain't a mind reader. <laughs> okay. Like you have to demand the universe gives you what you desire and you have to do the things to back those things up. So you can watch every YouTube video about how to eat. You can watch every friggin', you know, magazine it, at CVS on all muscle and fitness, but you're the one that has to get in the fucking gym and do the workouts. You're the one that has to sleep eight hours a night. You're the one that has to fast and eat a certain way and do certain things to get there. No one's going to knock on your door and be like, oh, I, 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 I heard you're feeling a little fluffy and not so fresh. Let me, let me help you out. No one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. Okay. The next thing is your relationships. Those motherfucking relationships. Are there relationships in your life that are not serving your highest, greatest good? Go back and listen to my Toxic Friends You Need to Bring to the Trash podcast. It's one of the first bitches podcasts. I think it was like bring to the dump or bring to the trash. I can't remember what bullshit I was saying at that point, but how do you desire your relationships to be? Maybe you're looking for your significant other or your forever person. Put that there. You know, if you are desiring a relationship that is going to fulfill you, and you're wasting your time on every fucking Joe Schmo from Kokomo on Tinder and Grinder and Bumble and whatever the fuck you sick little bastards are into. You're not making room for the person to come into your life that is going to be your person because you're fucking around with all the low lowlifes. You know, everyone's like, I don't know why I can't find my perfect person because you're fucking seven other dudes. There's no other chance for anyone to get up in your vagina because it's just so beat because you're banging all these fucking dinglings. The only reason I can say that because I used to do it too, okay? Mine was beat up like a fucking drum. And I was like, I don't understand why I can't find my husband. Um, because you're out at the club every night giving random dudes hand jobs, okay? That's why. My mother would be so proud of me. Thank God she's done this call. So what do you desire your relationships to be like? These could be relationships in loving ways, friendship ways, peer groups, colleagues, coworkers, babysitters for your kids, your dog sitter. I don't give a shit what it is, but name it to claim it. Now, the next thing, so important, your environment, your environment. People want more, but they have so much shit that's taking up space that God can't even give them more because it's like, where are you going to put it? Where are you going to put it? Start like in H2AP, we do a minimalism challenge every day in H2AP. I give you something to do. Clean out your junk drawer. Go through your old fucking rotten underwear that when you go to put them on, they go. Ksh. I know some of you bitches got underwear like that. Okay. You just put those granny panties on and the thing goes because the fucking the little elastic fibers are so just rotten. And you're like, I don't know why my husband doesn't want to have sex with me because your drawers are hanging off the back of your ass like Mr. Burns from the fucking Simpsons. <laughs> Celine feels personally attacked. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. I love it. We all have drawers like that. No, I threw those out a long time ago. I don't really like underwear that much. I like to go all natural. Just let my, my vajayjay -vajay breathe. Nice deep breaths. <laughs> so go through your shit. Minimize. Make room for more abundance to come in. 
okay? I don't care if that's your sock drawer, your underwear drawer, your closet, your garage, that, that fucking storage unit that you're paying $500 a month for, you don't even know what the fuck is in it. It's like that movie, Silence of the Lambs, where they go in, the guy's head is in the jar, and they're like, oh, Jesus Christ, right? Some of y'all motherfuckers have the heads in the jar, and you don't even know the heads are in the jar in the damn thing. You're paying $500 a month. Stop this right now. It's got to stop. I don't understand why people do this. Hey, I don't even know why, but I cannot mute my goddamn thing. Make sure you guys are on mute, guys. I don't want to hear you beating your children. I might have to call the authorities or join in. Never know what mood I'm in. So go through your house, purge, get rid of shit. I talk a lot about this in my book. Now, most people, what they do on their vision board is they put all this shit. They put yachts, they put private jets, they put diamonds, they put Louis Vuitton, Chanel, cars, all this crap. But if you don't master the first five life makers, you are never going to be rich. You are never going to have more. Sorry, Kim. You know, I love your children. You're never going to have more. Okay. So what do you desire financially? What do you desire financially? Do you want to make a certain amount of money with your coaching company so that you can afford first class tickets on Air France in La Premiere to Paris? Maybe. Do you want to fly to Bora Bora on a first class flight? I don't know. You want a Maserati? You want a Bugatti? You want a hot body? What does Brittany say? Got to work, bitch. Okay. So what do you desire? So if you are an entrepreneur, Write down the amount of money that you desire to make. Do your ambitious abundance affirmation. Maybe you write your ambitious abundance affirmation out and you post it on that part of your, um, on your bitch board. Lori's saying completely debt-free, mortgage paid off by 12, 31, 24. I love this for you. That's a fucking great goal. It's an amazing goal. I love that, Right. And a lot of people will say this, obviously I know Lori intimately, so I know what she does. I know what her husband does. So I know that that's like not even a problem, but a lot of people will say these things like, I want to be debt-free or I want to do this or I want to do that. And they're not working, <laughs> you know, where's the money going to come from? The sky, the stork, when it's dropping the baby off to the next door neighbor, the stork's going to drop some money on your front porch. It's not how it goes. So in ambitious abundance affirmation, remember we say what we desire, the monetary amount, by a certain time, and you have to tell the universe, God, whatever you believe in, what you're going to give back to the ethers for the money. So for me, the outstanding service that I provide for the money that I acquire, require is through Katie Boyd's Misfit Club and Ambitious. My faith and focus are so strong that there are no other alternatives. I can see, feel, and experience this money now. It is my birthright. It is now awaiting transfer to me, and so it is. That's part of my ambitious abundance affirmation. Everybody should be saying this morning and night. It should be on your vision board, right? I would love for you guys right now to tell me in the chat what some of your um, abundance goals are for 2023. I love this kind of stuff. Like let's create when you put it out there, you speak it to it and into existence. It can't not happen if you do the right things to back up what you desire. So let's go into that. Okay. So Michelle's saying a new house with a lower mortgage, not specific enough. It has to be so specific. I want to know where that house is. Okay. Is it in Beverly Hills? Is it over here? Is it over there, right? What the, I wanna know the exact house, what it looks like, how many garages, how many bathrooms? I wanna know it all. And what is your mortgage? So you have to say, and my mortgage is this money. It has to be so specific. Okay, new house, I love this. Lori says, I never put my ambitious abundance on affirmation on my board. Try it. I'm telling you it works. Okay, Michelle. New house in Westwood. Love Westwood. Same area as now. Four bedrooms. Guest house for those damn birds. <laughs> I love it. 
She's actually talking about real birds. She's not calling people birds. She actually is talking about real birds. What does the house look like? Is it French style? Is it modern? Like really get specific. It's so funny because if you look at my old Pinterest from like a decade ago, my house is on everything I pinned, like literally to the, it's like to the T. So get very, very, very specific. All right, guys, I'm waiting. Come on. What? Tell me. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Don't be a pussy. I don't really care what it looks like, though. Michelle Brando, stop this. So if I made you move into like where the, the Black Dahlia was fucking murdered, you'd be like, that's cool. I'll take that house. Or like the murder house in American Horror Story. You want to live there? <laughs> Come on, man. It's not a murder house. A big yard. Does the, the yard have a pool? Does it have a hot tub? It's like tell, like tell, like really specific, really, really specific. <laughs> it's not a murder house. Yeah, you never know, man. Lisa's saying to save forty thousand dollars by December two thousand twenty-three. I love this. Okay, so where is that money going, Lisa? Is it going to an S and P five hundred stock account? Is it going to an IRA? Is the money going into a savings account? Are you Portuguese and it's going into your sock drawer, bundled up in a sock like my grandparents used to, right? Or is it going under your mattress? Where is it? Or are you going to keep it in your house in a safe? I want to know where the money's going. Celine says, I desire to stop renting and purchase a three bedroom house with a huge witchy garden and have $10,000 in my IRA. I love this. I love this. I love a good witchy garden. That's like my favorite thing in the whole entire world. You know, I'm a garden, you know, I'm a homestead and hoe. And I like some garden action. It's like one of my favorite things. I'm sorry, but I'm looking at everybody here and I know a lot of you guys have a lot of very lofty financial goals. And the fact that no one's sharing except like two people is making my butthole pucker and I'm getting flushed and I'm getting pissed. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> Ke Kelly goes, mine is an abundance of experiences with family and friends that bring me joy. I love that. I love that. What kind of experiences, Kelly? We gotta go golfing. We're gonna have. What are we doing? What are we? What? what what's the experiences? Get specific. Lori says some of the things on my board are motivational quotes. That's good. I like that too. And and it's a good mix, right? To have the motivational quotes, to have some pictures, but also very specific things, right? Melissa saying to have. $500,000 liquid cash in my possession by 1124. I love that. My, my butthole just puckered. I got super excited. Yes, queen. That's what I'm talking about. Kim says, going into my year two of your vocabulary and cycle, and I feel all of this is shifting for me right this second. <laughs> I love it. Because remember, <coughs> God, my throat is just like, fuck you, Katie, stop talking. Remember, when you're in your year one, two, and three of your vocabulary and cycle, that's when you really start planting the seeds, you know, so that you're there, girl. And January 1st is your year two, right? So it's going to be big shit. Kelly says, anything that makes me laugh my ass off. Well, you know, I will help with that. I will contribute to that fund on your vision board, right? <laughs> I love that. Okay, does anybody have any questions about their bitch boards that I can answer? Please feel free to um, ask or forever hold your peace. I think this is very important to make sure that you guys are on the right, you guys are doing this the right way, you're creating the right way. I really, really, really desire for each and every one of you guys to do this properly. I'm reading saying, what was number five and six? Bitch, what do you think it was? What's the fifth and sixth life maker and breaker? Your environment and your money, babe. What's going on with that? Yes. Number five is environment, right? So what is your environment? What is your wealth? Get very specific, okay? So what I would like to do is after you guys all create your bitch boards, I want to have um, you guys post them on the, uh, on the app so we can get like cheer each other on. And I think that, Every time people do that, you see other people's stuff and you get inspired. I see other people's bitch boards and I'm like, oh, that was a really good idea. I didn't even think about putting that there, you know? Um, Shan's saying, do, oh, good question. Do you have a ritual before sitting down and do the board, sage meditation? 
Um, I just get very centered and I always ask my spirit guides to come in and help me create. Um, so you guys know, like I have my little thing that I say, I can just tell you. So what I do is God, goddess, universal life force, energy, all of my guardians and my guides and my loved ones who are no longer here on this three-dimensional earth plane and all my ancestors who came before me and my family of galactic beings of light surround me with your love and your light and your ancient wisdom. Help me create this vision board to fill in the blank. Be very specific in setting your intention. Um, does every... Michelle saying, does everything have to be in that specific order? It doesn't have to be in that specific order on your board, but you want to make sure that you hit it every one of those six things in your vision board. Because like people will put like um, all this money stuff, they'll put like private jets and yachts and all this crap. And I'm like, yeah, but what about your relationships? What about your, you have no fucking boundaries. How are you going to get a yacht and a private jet if you're letting everybody fuck you in the ass with no lube? And no one has any boundaries and they're just like, you know, taking you to the freaking cleaners every day. Right. So it doesn't have to be in a specific order, but you definitely want to have something from each one of those six life makers. That's a really great question, Michelle. Great questions, guys. Okay. So let's work on this from now until the new year. Try to have your vision boards done by January 1st. And in the meantime, if you need help with anything, feel free to reach out to me on the app. Um, we have some really amazing things coming up for Ambitious. Um, A28P, our flagship signature program for Ambitious is beginning on uh, the sales are beginning on January 1st. And once it's sold out, it's sold out. So it's like the cart closes once it's sold out. So Kim and I will be sending an email out to everybody about the start of A28P. I know a lot of you guys have done A28P in the past. If you've never done the new A28P, it's a totally different. I mean, anyone that's done the new A28P can attest it's a totally different experience um, than the old A28P. Um, from this day forward, my new boundaries are I will not be doing any healing sessions with anyone or doing any business coaching until they people have done one round of A28P. I feel like a lot of people come in and they want healing sessions. They want all these things with me, but they've never cleaned out their bodies. They've never cleaned out their energy. They're just really like in the shit pit. And I can't get in and do my work with you if you haven't cleaned up your own stuff on your own. So A28P sales start January 1st. Kim and I will be sending out an email in the next couple of days. Um, we are launching a new um, Ambitious Academy. We're launching a different part of the app. There's just so many things coming up. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, Bitcha Palooza obviously is in a couple of weeks, but we plan on having another one uh, late July, early August. If people like miss the first one, we're going to have one. And then Bitchapalooza is going to be once a year in the summertime. I have been so stressed out because I'm like, oh my God, what if it snows? What if people can't get here? What if the in the summertime in New England, it's always perfect here and there's never any problems unless there's some kind of a hurricane, but that doesn't happen until like the fall and stuff. So um, we have Bitchapalooza coming up too. Uh, Reiki classes. Yeah, we're going to be having some Reiki uh, multi-dimensional healing certification classes this year. I know a lot of you guys have like your number two or you have your number one and you want your two and you want your three or you want your four. We're going to be doing a lot of that stuff as well, which is so, so, so exciting. Jen goes, oh yeah, I exhausted you during my session, Cle cleaned out now. Well, Jen came all the way from Texas and she did a VIB day, which is an, a very important bitch day, which is a full day with me. Um, so I think that we were both probably exhausted by the end of that because we did a lot of fucking heavy work. But guess what? That started, it started to change your life. You did A to 8P, you're a different person now. So I'm just really proud of you. So kudos to you for doing the work and, and sacrificing and taking time out of your busy life and your family and your children and work to like come and change your life. I, I fucking appreciate that. I'm, you're a badass bitch. You really, truly are. So A to 8P. Sales are January 1st. Get in there. It's going to be awesome. Um, A28P for January is actually early access is $100 off and, and four calls. 
So our last H2AP was $544.44 for the month. This is going to be $444.44. So it's $100 off and you get four calls as well. Okay. So just a little incentive to get in and um, Jen goes, take my money, girl, I will, but I will give you so much more, you know it, but I'm really excited. I'm excited for 2023. It's going to be a fucking amazing year. I feel it in my bones, but it doesn't matter. Like if the clock turns midnight or whatever, it's up to you to, to do the things that it takes to change your life. I'm giving you the tools but I don't give a fuck if you use them or not. I don't care. You want to be a mediocre bitch in 2023? Great. No sweat off of my ass. I don't give a shit because my goal and my mission and my definiteness of purpose here on this earth as Katie motherfucking Boyd is to give you the tools. You have to use the appropriate tools for the job. And I am not connected to your outcome. I'm only connected to my outcome. People want me to do the work for them. I don't do that. I will give you the tools, but you got to pick the appropriate tool for each job. So I'm looking forward to the new year. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about tonight, feel free to inbox me in the app. Um, I've been super busy wrapping up the new year, uh, the, the end of 2022. I've been in healing sessions. I have had one-on-one. -on -one. So if you've already um, reached out to me in Mighty Networks app and I haven't got back to you, I will. Unless you've already answered your question and, and then I won't get back to you. I'll just ignore it because <laughs> sometimes that happens too. Does anybody have any questions before I go? Okay, Kim. Yeah, Shannon, Kim already answered your question. Perfect. Any questions? Any questions? All right, guys, I'm going to go flick my bean. I'm going to stop talking because I sound like I'm about to fucking die. I don't know why my voice is like this. This is what happens when you yell at people for like 10 hours a day. You just get a little hoarse. You just get a little hoarse because that's what I'm good at. I'm a professional screamer. All right, guys, I love you. Happy New Year. It's going to be so fucking amazing. Make 2023 your bitch or not, but I'm going to make it my bitch. And I hope that you guys all follow suit. I love each and every one of you. Don't forget to stay on bitches. Podcast drops, new podcast drops next week. We're back at it. And uh, I'm just looking forward to what the new year is going to bring for all of us. And I'm so hopeful. And I'm so grateful. And thank you for taking time out of your busy life to be here. And I love you guys. And I'll see you over on the app. Happy motherfucking new year. Peace, love, and hair grease. Bye, guys.